Hey coders, I'm here today with a walkthrough on how to provision a MySQL database in your Heroku web apps. If you don't know what's currently going on, check out the last video on how to deploy with Heroku. And let's say you needed a full stack web application deployed, not something simple like we did in the last video. Well, you would need to provision some kind of MySQL database in Heroku to connect to a deployed database and store that information there. And it's actually very simple and actually free for your hobbyist tier to provision one and get it up and running in no time. So after you create your web app from the last video, you can go to its dashboard by clicking on it in your dashboard. So if I wanted Serene Falls, I would click on it there in my dashboard. And you can either go to this overview or this resources tab. The overview has this configure add-ons button here, which just takes you to the resources tab anyway. And this is where you want to go. You have this add-ons we can search for here. There's actually a whole host of them that you can use, but we're going to be sticking to the ClearDB MySQL add-on. We can go ahead and look for it in the list or just begin typing ClearDB and it should be one of the only ones that pops up after a few letters. We're going to click on it and we're, while there are a lot of different versions you can have depending on how much data you need to store, how fast it needs to be, et cetera, et cetera. For this demo and for most of your deployed portfolio web apps and test sites and fun um, projects and stuff like that, Ignite is typically good enough for what you might need. So we're going to provision the free one and go ahead and do that here. And after a few minutes, it should go ahead and give us this positive message that it's ready to go. So how do we connect to it? Where did it go? Good question. If we go to our settings tab here, we will notice this config vars section. So this is actually where you would store environment variables and their values if you had any. So if I click on reveal convict vars here, we will see our clear DB database URL is this whole mess of characters here. It's a whole bunch of stuff in this long URL. So how does this help us connect to a database? Well, within this URL is everything you need to know. So I actually have a little diagram here breaking down an example MySQL link. So everything between the double forward slashes and the colon will actually be your DB username. All you have to do is make an environment variable with this value and you'll be good to go. Everything in between the colon and this at symbol will be your DB password. Everything between the at symbol and the forward slash would be your host. And then everything after the forward slash up to the question mark will be your default schema. You get one schema to work in that can have as many tables as you pretty much want. And that's really all you need to know to get it connected. So if we needed to make these into configuration variables, into um, environment variables, we would make the key or property names on the left-hand side and their values on the right-hand side. So for example, I would have something like DB user, and this is where I would paste my MySQL database um, provision add-on username, right? And click add. And again, the convention of using capital letters and underscores is a standard practice for environment and configuration variables. You don't have to follow it as long as you're consistent in their usage, but it's better off that you do it this way as it's very easy to tell these environment variables away from other things. So then we had our DB password and this order doesn't matter either. You can put them in whatever order you want with again, whatever names you want. I'm just following the way I was taught to do it and it's kind of stuck with me ever since, probably the same way this will stick with you. That was our host name, add, and then we had our DB schema. And this is the information that would be put into your MySQL connection. So if you had a configuration object from your Node Express MySQL project, you would have some kind of create connection that would require these values. And so at this point in the game, you should know that you never, never, ever, ever push these values um, directly to GitHub. What you want to do instead is use environment variables to hide that file away from GitHub and have your deployed version use these environment variables instead. And this is also where you put things like your Stripe API key, your Mailgun API key, and anything else you might want to hide away from GitHub and would be potential hackers in your deployed um, websites. So with that being done, um, I don't have a template that's actually using this information, but we can still test our connection and write this MySQL syntax that we need inside of our MySQL workbench. And you should have gone through the database sections by this point, so you should have this installed and ready to go on your system as well. 
Um, in this connections tab, at this point in time, you probably only have a local host connection where you've been developing and testing your schemas and learning MySQL, what a foreign key is and joins and all that kind of fun, fun stuff. But let's go ahead and check out our test connection. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this plus button to create a new connection. We're going to call it deploy to DB for now or whatever you want to call it. And let's go ahead and start copying in our values. I'm actually working off a notepad to my right here of the, the link that I was demoing in that diagram of like that whole MySQL link and pulling the information I need from it. So there was our host name. We had our default schema at the end there. We had our username coming up which should be there. And then I'm gonna click on this test connection button and it should ask me for a password, which was where I'm going to go ahead and paste my value in and click and save password vault. Successfully made the MySQL connection. If you have any errors, sometimes it takes a while for the provision DB add-on to be connected to. So give it maybe five to 10 minutes and try again to see if that works. Otherwise, go back and make sure you've correctly provisioned the DB and you have successfully copied and pasted these values away from that long URL. Um, and from there, make sure you check the clear DB documentation to see what other errors you might be getting. So with that test connection successfully done, I can click on OK and I have this deployed DB. If I click on it here, it opens the MySQL editor where I can begin writing MySQL syntax directly to my deployed database on Heroku. Um, if you're anything like me, I like to keep a log of any kind of um, schemas and data I might need on my development server. That way all I have to do is copy and paste that file from my development server or my development MySQL stuff directly to this one, run it, and it's typically good to go. If you haven't been keeping up with that kind of stuff and you have a very large schema that you need to rewrite, it could be a bit tedious to do so. Typically, if it's only a few tables, I just go ahead and recreate them in here because it'll be much easier to deal with it that way and you run into less trouble. At the moment, I believe MySQL Workbench and MySQL Server are on version 8.0, whereas ClearDB still works on 5.7. There's a couple differences. For example, you might need to convert some of your date time columns to timestamps to make this code up and work via the export import wizard. We're going to go ahead and give it a shot here and go back to my home tab where I'm going to open up my local host. <clears throat> On my local host, I had this blogs table, set of tables here, this blog schema that has like a bunch of test blog posts and test users. Um, when I'm helping students trying to debug their blogs, I connect them to this schema to see if it works or not. And what I'm actually going to be doing here is clicking on this data export in the navigator here. I'm going to select, I want to export the blogs schema, which and all its associated tables. So you can select dump structure and data. If it has any stored procedures, events, or triggers, you might want to dump those, but there are sometimes issues with stored procedures and importing to clear DB where you might not have access to some of the user privileges you might need to create those. If that's the case, if you have any kind of um, error saying you need super privileges or admin privileges, just rewrite your stored procedure directly on your deployed DB MySQL queries, and then it should start working. Meaning I would come back here and manually rewrite my stored procedure if I need to. Other than that, you're gonna want to export to a self-contained file down here and remember the path to where it goes. And you're gonna want to create a dump in a single transaction. Make sure that box is, box is checked. Click on start export with any luck. It exports just fine to one.sql file, which you can actually open in VS Code to check out what it looks like. You'll see that it drops tables if they exist. It creates the tables with your structure, inserts all the data, and just goes um, down the line one by one. And that's where you can actually go into that .sql dump file and edit your date time columns to timestamp or any kind of other errors you might Google to try and, and figure out why something doesn't import correctly to the ClearDB MySQL server. Okay, so since it's exported correctly, I'm gonna go back to my deployed DB tab and click on data import here. I'm gonna import from a self-contained file and select the one I just exported and open that. My default schema will be the Heroku schema that I provisioned. And other than that, it should be good to go. With any luck, if I click on start import, it works without any errors. Wow, okay, this is a miracle. This is a good night. Um, and sometimes in your MySQL workbench, you'll have to refresh this to see your tables actually pop in. And there they are. The dropdown appears, and all the exact same tables are here. So now this is in my online deployed MySQL database and no longer on my local one. 
So if I run a select all from blogs here, hopefully it selects all my test blog data, and indeed it does. A bunch of lorem ipsum, but nevertheless, it got ported over from my local development server to my provisioned ClearDB MySQL server. And that should wrap it up for this video. Again, um, your queries and your Express project will be exactly what you need them to be. Those won't change. The only thing that you're gonna have to change is that connection configuration object to use these environment variables that will get filled in by Heroku's backend for us. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or within Gravity underneath the discussion in this video. And I hope you'll have a very fun time deploying your full stack web apps to Heroku and have a great time hacking these projects together. Bye.